pi is 3.14159265. But you came here for Pocket Ronnie, so please stay tuned. Okay, we're going to be talking about different parts of a circle or things that we might see in a circle. We have this given picture where on, I am on 12B, uh, 12B, and you have this picture and given D is the center of the circle, okay? So if you look at number one, the perimeter of the circle, okay, we learned that the perimeter is the outside, going around the outside of something. The perimeter of a circle has a special name. It's actually called the circumference. The circumference and the circumference of a circle by the formula if you want to put this on your formula card circumference equals 2 times pi times the radius or you can always say 2 times the radius is the same as the diameter so you can say the circumference is pi times d so that's two different ways to write the formula of circumference okay also uh, look at number two. Remember your symbols. This means line segment CG. What is the line segment C CG? Hang on, I think I wrote that wrong. Uh, oh, I just don't have it drawn in my picture. Here we go. Let's add it to my picture right here. Okay, that's better. Okay. The line segment CG, from C to G, what do we call this? It is called a chord. A chord. By definition, a chord is a line segment, this is very important, a line segment that touches two points of the circumference on a circle. Okay, so a chord. Line, a chord is just, it crosses, it touches two points of the circumference on a circle. Line, line segment CG is called a chord. Okay, number three, what do we call a 3D circle? It's a sphere. A sphere is just a 3D circle, like a ball, a basketball, volleyball. Number four, we want half the length of line segment BG. So, line segment BG. If you look at line segment BG, it goes all the way from one side of the circle all the way to the other side, and it goes to the center. Anytime you have a chord, because it's a line segment, a line segment is a chord, if you have a chord that goes to the center of the circle, that is called the diameter. To go all the way from one side of the circle to the other side of the circle through the center, that is the diameter. Diameter is just a special chord. Diameter is a chord, it just has a special name to it. We want half of BG, which BG is the diameter. Half of the diameter is called the radius. The radius goes from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle. Okay, line segment BD, that's BD. From the center of the circle to the outside of the circle, that's the radius. Anything from the center of the circle to the outside of the, of the circle is called the radius. Okay, let's look at our picture for a minute. What other diameters do we have that goes from one side of the circle to the other side through the center? C, F is a diameter. That's a chord that goes to the center. Some other radius that we have? D, F, D, G, D, C. Those are all radii. All right, look at number six. Number six. A chord that goes to the center of the circle, we just said that, a chord that goes to the center is the diameter. CF is a diameter, BG is a diameter, that's a chord that goes to the center of the circle. That's the definition of diameter. Okay, now we're looking at a line uh, intersecting point F. What do we call the line that intersects at point F? Right here, this line that intersects at point F is a tangent. A tangent is, by definition, a tangent is a line that intersects a circle at only one point. So, even you can't tell by my picture, but theoretically, 
this line intersects my circle at exactly one point, which is point F. And the other thing to know about a tangent is a tangent is perpendicular with the radius. Any tangent of a circle will always be perpendicular with your radius. Okay, another, let me point out in our picture, another chord, we talked about lines, line segment CG is a chord, line segment AE is also a chord. A chord is just a line segment that touches two points at, at, on the circumference. Okay, looking at number eight, what do we call a piece of the circumference? A piece of the circumference, part of my F is erased, F, circumference. A piece of the circumference is called an arc. Okay, if I just had, okay, let's just say here I have a whole circle, but I only have a portion of that. Okay, there's a piece of my circle that's called an arc. If I have a piece of the area of the circle, okay, let's say I take out a whole chunk. Okay, if I take out a whole chunk of that circle, I call that a sector. So a piece of pi, a piece of pi is a sector, a piece, which is a piece of the whole area of the circle, a piece of the circumference is an arc. Okay, let's look at number 10. A line that intersects the circumference at mm points is a secant, okay? The main difference between a secant and a chord, I'm going to draw you one, here is a chord, that's a chord. A chord is a line segment. Here we are dealing with a line. Right there. That is a line that goes, that touches the circumference at two points. A line is a secant. Okay. Line is a secant. Line segment is a chord. This right there is a chord, which is a line segment. This right here is a secant, which is a line, a line that touches two pieces of the circumference, two points. Okay, the definition of an ellipse, you can think of it as an oval. I'm just going to draw one for you. Ellipse. That might not be the best ellipse, but there's an ellipse. All right, let's look at 12B15. You have this figure right here. C is the center of the circle. And in problem number 15, they tell you that. They say that C is the center of the circle. And then they tell you that they tell you that the measure of angle ACB is 44 degrees. Okay? ACB. ACB. That angle right there is 44 degrees. That angle, ACB, is called a central angle. You can remember that's called a central angle because it's from the center of the circle. C right there is the center of the circle, and the angle is at the center of the circle, so it's a central angle. Whenever you have a central angle, this arc out here, AB, from A to B, that is called the minor arc. Arcs are measured in degrees, just like angles. This arc, this minor arc, will be the same measurement as the central angle. So if ACB, the central angle, is 44 degrees, this arc is also 44 degrees. So when they ask you what is the minor arc, it is 44 degrees. We can call that, you can say, the measure of arc AB, you can write it like this, with an arc symbol, measure AB with an arc symbol above the AB, is equal to 44 degrees. That is the minor arc. The major arc, they don't ask you this in the, in the book, but the major arc would be everything else around the circle. AB from here to here is the minor arc. Going all the way around the other way is the major arc. How many degrees are in a circle? 360. So the major arc would be 360 degrees minus 44 degrees. That's how you find the major arc. Okay, another angle that I wanted to tell you about is this angle right here. Remember, a central angle comes from the center of the circle. This angle, A, there's no vertex right here, but we could put a letter to it. Let's just call this point right here E. 
AEB is called an inscribed angle. It means that this angle is inscribed inside the circle. You can remember inscribed as inside. So this angle, an inscribed, goes all the way to one side of the circle and back. Central angle only goes to the center of the circle. Inscribed angle goes all the way across the circle. The inscribed angle will be half of this minor arc. If the central angle is 44 degrees, then the minor arc equals the central angle, which is also 44 degrees, and then the inscribed angle is half of the minor arc. So in other words, this inscribed angle would only be 22 degrees. It will be half of the minor arc, and that minor arc was 44 degrees. So the inscribed angle is half of that, which is 22.